Only 6,180 pounds falling nicely into the half ton range. Super slide bunkhouse, one owner, barely towed Cherokee coming in on trade. Well, uh, down, not necessarily on trade. We're selling it on consignment here at Halet RV uh, Brokers of Coldwater, Michigan. And this is our consignment location. That's what all these trailers here in the background are. These are things that we're selling for people. The good news is, doesn't matter if we're selling it for them or if it's one of our own used pieces of inventory. Hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer, package deals, RV delivery, and everything between. We can still do all of those things for you. So we sold this to the one and only original owner. They used it for a couple years, uh, effectively for seasonal park use. It has maybe, maybe 500 towing miles on it. That is about it. And when it wasn't being used, it was being stored indoors, which is just a remarkably good thing to do to keep an RV in great shape. So first, a quick look at travel access. That's our rear main, I guess you'd call it, entry door with that big walk-in pantry closet right next to it. And you see that with the slide fully retracted, you can easily navigate through here. You can still get to those drawers under the dinette. You can get over here to the kitchen, to the fridge, to the cabinetry pretty easily. Um, you see that the bedroom is uh, a little bit tricky to get to. Remember, there's a second direct entry door accessible from outside where you can go straight into there. Now, if I give us a, a quick spin left, also with the slide closed, you see that we have very easy access to our bathroom and our bunks. So if you are going down the road, you need to stop, you need to cook a sandwich, uh, you need to you know do any of that stuff, you need to just rub the sleep out of your eyes real quick. This RV is very capable of doing those things. Ironic, considering it was used almost exclusively for park use. And when we crack the super slide on this sucker, suddenly, big, bright, comfy, wide open, and welcoming, all of those words start coming into play. You can see right here, this is, um, actually, I think this was the first year Cherokee built this specific layout. And it was when the trend of direct-facing entertainment finally started finding its way into bunkhouse RVs. Like you see, if you choose to throw a TV up in here, which I don't believe they ever did, you're directly across from a very cinema-style sofa. It is a bifold sofa. It can fold down to a basic sleeper. I don't think you'll need it with the bunks back here. But you got that little optional use fold-down armrest. But what's cool about this one is it does maintain storage below, kind of like the dinette. We'll see some of that in a little bit here. Uh, directly across, we got that handy shoe garage, cutting the clutter. And right above that, beautiful woodwork. And I love that faux brick wall. I've always liked that stuff. Things come and go in the industry, though. Everything has a time and a phase, I guess you'll say. There's a big walk-in closet behind that. We'll see that when we take a look at the kitchen storage in just a minute. But first, back here... Back to the main entry door where we started our little adventure. That does have a deadbolt and obviously a um, little screen, uh, you know, door. But what's cool about these screens is you can actually um, lock them. That little hockey puck looking thing right there, you can wedge that down below the black screen door handle before the door is closed and you can effectively lock the screen door. It's very easy for an adult to essentially unlock it. It's very hard for a little child to do that, however. Um, kind of a ni nice little baby safety kind of thing. Double over double bunks, I can see. You know, you can tell from the pattern on the fabric. I guess they've been used a little bit, but they they certainly ain't wore out. I'm not seeing anything here that really gives me concern. I'm not seeing things like kick marks on the walls and the ceiling and stuff. We didn't have kids going bananas, you know, flailing around in here. And anytime that we see a open ladder wall like that, it always makes the RV look and feel a bit larger. Now, it looks cool. It looks like, wow, look at that neat little etching they put on the door. That's actually just a print on the door panel, but man, does it look 3D. Um, bathroom over here. You will find whether it's this bathroom or the main kitchen area, everything in this has a sealed edge press membrane counter, and that's a big sink for adult hands. Similarly, right above that, we have ourselves a nice large corner vanity and an, and an angle mounted sink and um, mirror make this very easy to actually like stand in the bathroom to use. And up top, of course, a larger vent fan right here. And um, that is actually the reason that these doors are slotted. There's a little bitty gap up top. Not enough that privacy is going to be lost, but you can leave the bathroom door closed and you can leave that fan running and you can get better airflow and the whole house actually can have a lot of the hot air and humidity exhausted out of it. Of course, there is a full shade for that big window right there, but it does make the bathroom look and feel kind of larger. And uh, of course, down below, you know, foot flush stool. And as I said, 
when we turn ourselves around, we are going to begin by taking a look at that big walk-in closet behind the entertainment center. As we slide back here, I do mean walk in, because you can see it's either you got the little hanging closet space right there, but really deep, easy access pantry space, which is nice. Another cool thing about a, uh, a tall open area like this, if you wanted to put like a broom hanger on the left side or the right side here, there's actual room in here to like keep a normal broom or a vacuum or a thing. Um, you know, very few RVs nowadays seem to really have room for that kind of stuff. Now, the DVD uh, stereo here is Bluetooth also, but note the little USB uh, charge station here. Handy little place to keep some devices uh, up and running. Neat little, you know, mini DVD or kind of almost mini pantry storage right below the entertainment center above the shoe garage. Then as we come over here, you see more of that sealed edge counter stuff. One of the cool things about that is sealed counter allows for a recessed sink. And this has a one basin farm sink, like the big one giant sink effectively. And then uh, with the uh, counter matching sink cover and flush mount stove, you got a decent amount of prep space back here. But what's really cool is that rear corner back there, like that's always really good for like a coffee maker. Hot stuff that you can keep away from the little kids again. Overhead storage up here, full depth, meaning same depth as the microwave. With that cool, uh, you know, sunshade equipped skylight above. Now, as we look down below, one of the things Cherokee does a little different in their kitchen is they'll use two big drawers instead of uh, three little ones or two little ones like some brands do. Much more spatula friendly, by the way. Then over here, you see how they have 40 inch like full extension drawers below that big seating sleeping dinette space right there. So storage is very, very easy to get to here. And that is an extra large, what I call true U dinette. It's like seven foot long, 44 inches deep. So not only can you know your family really gather around there, but uh, you can you know sleep on it like an adult, <laughs> bigger people, bigger kids. Sliding privacy door up here to the front master bedroom, and this room is simple but effective. It does what it needs to. It doesn't try to do anything more than that. The idea behind this is that you're going to spend most of your time in the living room. This is here just so that at the end of the night, you got a place that you can shut the door, or if you want to kind of sneak in and out and hit the fire pit, you've got your own door here with its own deadbolt privacy door. That's the thing. Some people say, I don't like it when there's a door in the bedroom. Well, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget there's a deadbolt on that door, so it ain't like someone's just going to walk in and watch you breathing at night or draw on your face or something. <laughs> Down below that bed, we get the storage below the bed. You see that actually goes under the foot of the bed and all the way over here onto the door side. Plenty of room if you choose to use that little side mount solar prep plug right there. If you're going to do a little bit of boondock off-grid camping, it's a nice little portable uh, charge plug if you get one of those portable suitcase solar jobs. Just kind of keep your batteries topped off, trickle charged. Uh, right below that easy tilt power awning, you have uh, outside TV hookups also, but if nothing else, you got your speakers outdoors. Power tongue jack up front doing the heavy lifting for you. And again, this was stored indoors when not in use. So as a result, the roof, the seals, the skin, the decals, all that stuff just has not been subject to weather exposure the way it otherwise could have been overall. Pretty darn good out here. Now, one of the nice things about RVs is that you can take a peek below the skirt without getting slapped upside the face. That's deplorable behavior, obviously, but in an RV, it's a good thing to do. So you can do things like see the fact that this does have enclosed holding tanks. There's a little skin on the areas of the underbelly in which the holding tanks would be located. Um, just an extra little layer of protection that they put on these. It's very low dollar, yet very effective. And that's really who Cherokee is. They're very good at uh, kind of maximizing output with minimal input. Black tank flush back there in that corner as well. 200 pound rated flip down cargo rack on the back. Very handy if you have some bicycles extra coolers, maybe a small generator to be able to run some household stuff if you're off-grid. You could put all that stuff on there. And one of the things I think people enjoy about this layout in particular is most manufacturers who build a layout like this, they're going to stuff a camp kitchen under those bunks because it's a very good and effective, easy place to hide one. But the number one request I get on a camp kitchen is, can I get this ordered without that? Well, cool thing is that Cherokee has always built this model without a camp kitchen under the bunks. 
So what that's doing is just giving us another large outside storage compartment in addition to that big uh, area under the front master bed that we saw earlier. Um, ooh, slipping on a little bit of ice here, trying not to break my neck. Um, <laughs> speaking of not breaking my neck, how about <laughs> we take a jaunt up to the roof, shall we? <laughs> And a quick look up top here reviews the roof that I don't think you gotta get too awful concerned about. Everything up here looks good. Little bit of storage dust on it, but show me a trailer, you know, that's been stored inside a barn for the last six months that doesn't look kind of like this on the roof. Overall, it looks great. You can also see how over the bathroom they added that Camco roof vent cover over that XL vent fan. And that pretty much sums it up. This is one that is very traveling half ton friendly, although it was used just for park use. And they're basically just done camping. And that's the only reason it's here. Halet RV Brokers of Coldwater, Michigan, just about a mile uh, down the road from our sister store, Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan, straight that way past the gas company right there. And you can see, we got all kinds of different stuff. Fifth wheels, motor homes, even some vehicles down here. Doesn't matter what you're looking for. Chances are, if it's on wheels, we have it. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Have a great day.